الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله بعد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد we continue with the عقيدة of the four Imams today إن شاء الله he says and this is page number five ومن السنة اللازمة التي من ترك منها خصلة لم يقبلها ويؤمن بها لم يكن من أهلها and from the binding and necessary sunnah which whoever leaves a single matter from it has not accepted it and has not believed in it he will not be counted from his people are these matters which he is going to list or mention he says and from the binding and necessary sunnah which whoever leaves a single you don't have that paper you don't have that paper. And from the binding and necessary sunnah, which whoever leaves a single matter from it, if you leave any of these points he's going to mention, which is point number 13 all the way to 60 something, Imam Ahmad is saying to you, from the binding and necessary sunnah, which if you leave a matter from these matters, from these points, then you are counted as someone who has not accepted the sunnah. And someone who has not really believed in the sunnah. And you'll not be counted from its people, meaning the people of the Sunnah or Ahl Sunnah. So if you're not Ahl Sunnah, you're automatically on the other side. It's not a good sign. Then he's mentioned these points. Whatever we mentioned before was the general belief. Like we said, what is Islam? What is the Sunnah? To submit to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as understood and practiced by the, by the Sahaba, the Salaf. That's it. That is the basic Islam. And to live of bid'ah and to live of controversies and argumentation and all that. That is basics. That is general. Now he mentions the points. Now he mentions the points. Now we're learning Aqeedah. First point he mentioned, which is point number 13. Al-Imanu bil-Qadr. Khayrihi wa sharrihi. To have faith in Al-Qadr. The divine pre-decree. Both its good and evil. وَالتَّسْدِيقُ بِالْأَحَدِيثِ فِيهِ وَالْإِيمَانُ بِهَا And to affirm the ahadith related to it, meaning to Qadr, and to have faith in them. لَا يُقَالُ لِمَا وَلَا كَيْفَ إِنَّمَا هُوَ التَّسْدِيقُ وَالْإِيمَانُ بِهَا It is not to be said لِمَا why or كيف how. It is but attestation to the truthfulness of such ahadith and having faith in them. Again, from the necessary binding points of the sunnah, which if you leave, you're not counted as someone from the sunnah, you have not accepted the sunnah, you've not believed in the sunnah. Point number one, he mentions belief in the qadr. To have faith in al-qadr, the divine pre-decree, both its good and evil. And to affirm the ahadith related to qadr. All of the ahadith which came about qadr, affirm them and to have faith in them, believe in them. Because some of them might seem not um, let's say it's not normal stuff which you hear every day it's things you cannot comprehend things of the unseen is the qadr of Allah that's why he says from our belief it is not to be said why or how it is but attestation to the truthfulness of such a hadith and having faith in them and you have footnote number six there it says, see appendix one and hand out on Qadr. So we go to the hand out on Qadr. This is the hand out on the Qadr. A lot of interesting reading. I know the Qadr is always interesting. There's so many question marks. Not questions. Question marks. It's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like that. The Qadr, as Ibn Abbas and other scholars, they said, Sirrullah, that is the secret of Allah. If you try to find it, you'll get lost. If you try to find it, you'll get lost. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الْقَدَرْ فَأَمْسِكُوا When Qadr is mentioned, don't try to delve so deep. Believe in what you have to believe and leave the rest to Allah. But in this society, when you have been taught since kindergarten, the word which our children and most children who grew up here, the word you say most, you know is what? 
Why? They teach you that for a reason and a purpose. If only you knew. There is a reason behind that. Because they come from an atheistic point of view. They have to question everything. And you know if they put that question marks in your heart. Then you doubt what you believe. Because belief. Or belief. Sorry. Belief is mainly centered around things which you don't see. You don't see Allah. You don't see your God. You don't see angels. You never saw the prophets. But do you believe or not? You will say yes because you're a believer. Say Alhamdulillah. But the atheist or the one who's brought up in that environment, he's taught to say why. Why did God just save Moses so that he doesn't have to split the sea, he doesn't have to drown Firaun? Why? Why didn't the Quran just come down as one book? Why, why, and all these other questions. So we leave of that why. There's a good why and there's a bad why. Anyway, we are learning the Qadr. Now the Qadr is very interesting again, but... Now listen to me. Listen to me, boys and girls, listen to me. From the foundations of Iman, from the foundations of Iman, we have the six foundations of Iman. Some, some people call them six pillars of Iman. They're called foundations of Iman. You believe in and to mean al iman and to mean abillahi to believe in Allah, wa malaikati and his angels, wa kutubi and his books, wa rusuli and his and his books and then his messengers. And then wal qadar khayra shara and the qadar, the, the, the pre decree, the good and the bad of it. And the last one, wal yawm al akhir and the last day. Those are the foundations of Islamic belief. So Qadr, believe in, belief in Qadr, sorry, is part of our faith. Now what is belief in Qadr? He says, I'll be reading this for you, maybe you can just follow on the screen. I'll be reading it for you. He says, the belief in Al-Qadr, general and particular decrees, is one of the main pillars of Islamic faith. Most Muslims believe in this, however, a few really understand it. And I think that's why we are here so that we want to understand, inshallah. The aim of this article is not is to sorry is to clarify this concept to the minds of the ordinary Muslim and to the revert. We are ordinary Muslims, and we have some here, alhamdulillah, who are reverts. We ask Allah to benefit Muslims and hope that some questions pertaining to this matter are answered after the reader completes this article. Let us review or explain the meaning of Qadr. Al-Qadr is sometimes mentioned with Al-Qadr in the same statement. If so, then each has a distinct meaning. Qadr and Qadr. Qadr and Qadr. In English, you'll come back to the same translation, pre-decree. But if they're mentioned together in Arabic, then each of them has a distinct meaning. If, they mention, if only one is mentioned, then the other falls into it. Like what? Islam and Iman. If Islam is mentioned by itself, it comprises Islam and Iman. If they're mentioned differently or distinctly, each one of them has a distinct meaning. Likewise, Qadr and Qadr. He says, so when they are stated together, then Al-Qadr means that which Allah has eternally preordained in due measure pertaining to his creation. Qadr is what Allah has preordained. This is what is going to happen. On the other hand, Al-Qadha means that which Allah has decreed for his creation from existence, annihilation, or change. In this sense, Al-Qadr precedes Al-Qadha when combined in the same sentence. So Al-Qadr is what Allah has pre-decreed. Al-Qadha is when it is actually happening. Okay? The belief in Al-Qadr, and don't worry about that so much. Don't worry about that so much. That's my advice. It all comes back to the same meaning. The belief in Al-Qadr is obligatory. Why is it obligatory? Why did Imam Ahmad put it as a point of our Aqeedah, which if you leave, you're not counted as a people of the Sunnah? Because Allah has stated in several verses of the glorious Quran, as in the Quran, chapter 54, Surah Al-Qamar, verse number 49, he says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Verily, we have created all things with Qadr. Every single thing is 
pre-decreed, pre-ordained. Everything. And by everything we mean everything. As the Quran says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. We have created all things with qadr. And an example of a prophetic saying, that's one verse. Then he brings a proof from the sunnahs. You know, when you read the, can you please close that door? Zakalakhir. Yeah. When you read books of the scholars, they always bring you a proof from the Quran and a proof from the, from the hadith. That's what he's doing. The Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يؤمن عبد حتى يؤمن بالقدر خيري وشره من الله. No slave of Allah will truly believe until he believes in Al-Qadr. It's good and it's bad, it's from Allah. So, point number one. We have affirmed that belief in the Qadr is part of Iman. Because, because it is mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Clear. No disputes. Okay, so what do we believe about the Qadr? Now, this is the part we want. What do we believe? What is this Qadr we say we believe in? He says Al Qadr encompasses four themes. And this is things which I would recommend that you memorize. Al Qadr encompasses four themes. You don't have to write. Listen and look. Number one, Allah's knowledge. Which in Arabic we call Al Ilm. Number two, Allah's writing. Al-Kitaba. Number three, Allah's will. Al-Mashia. And number four, Allah's creation, Al-Khalq. This is the belief in Qadr which we Muslims believe in. These four things. Al-Ilm number one, which is Allah's knowledge. What does it mean briefly before we go through it and read on it? It just means that Allah has known everything and knows everything. So when we say we believe in the Qadr, that Allah has decreed things to happen, it means we believe Allah already knew these things will happen. Because it's just obvious. How could someone decree something if he didn't know it? It's impossible. So we believe Allah knew everything before it happened. He knows everything. That is the first theme to believe in a Qadr. Number two, he wrote down everything. Allah's writing, Al-Kitab. He wrote down every single thing which will happen and is going to happen. Al-Kitab. Number three, al mashia Nothing happens except by Allah's will, Allah's permission. When He wills something to happen, that's when it happens. Okay? And number four, Al-Khalq, Allah's creation, meaning the actual action, then Allah creates it for it to happen. These four themes is what we believe when we say we believe in the Qadr. Simple. Easy. Right or wrong? Just love this moment and you ask a question, then you have to answer yourself right. Okay, so number one. It's simple, right or wrong? It needs explanation though. No questions now. We already had 45 minutes of questions. Or is it half an hour? Actually, let's take a break and then we come back after the break, inshallah. As for the cameras, you know. What's your question? Very beautiful. I will touch on that after we finish, inshallah. Very good question. Yes. Now we're going to break down each of them. Yes, so we go number one, ilm, number two, kitab, number three, number four. That is Isha. Akhi, what time is that? It could be. It's too early though. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the four themes to believe in Al-Qadr, number one, Al-Ilm, Allah's knowledge. Number two, Al-Kitab, Allah's writing. Number three, Al-Mashia, Allah's will or permission. And number four, Al-Khalq, Allah's creation of the actual action. Now we go through each of them. Al-Ilm, number one. 
when we say al-ilm, the knowledge of Allah, what does it mean? We believe that Allah, we believe that Allah's knowledge encompasses everything. It is a basic belief of Muslims. Allah's knowledge encompasses everything. He knew what had occurred. What will occur, meaning in the future. And all that which did not occur, he knows it. All things such as lifespans, how long I'm going to live, how long you will live, uh, moves, what are you going to do after you leave the masjid? Deeds, what kind of good actions or bad actions you'll do tomorrow? Secrets which you're hiding right now. All obedient and disobedient acts, he knows everything. What is the proof for that? Why do we Muslims believe in that? The proof is there. Quran chapter 8, Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 75. Inna Allah bi kulli shayna alim. Verily Allah is the all-knowing of everything. Another proof which you know every day. Ayatul Kursi, what does it say? Ya alamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. He knows what is in front of them, what is coming and what is past. So he knows everything. So when you say we believe in the Qadr, it means we believe that Allah knew everything. That's why he decreed it. It's clear. I think this is very simple. It doesn't need so much explanation. But you'll be amazed that there's people who came from those deviant sects. And that's why you're studying Aqidah. There's people who came and denied this. And they said, no, Allah does not know what will happen until it happens? There's people who came and said, "In al amra unuf, Allah does not know what happens until when it happens. Now He knows. So Allah did not know that I am going to drink this tea until when I drink it, then He knows. And that goes against not only the act, the the clear text of the Quran and the Sunnah. It goes against the fitra. The natural disposition of any human being who believes in God. It just goes against that. Then how can he be a God if he doesn't know what is coming in the future? Right? There's people, and these people, now you'll understand why we're studying Aqidah. And now you understand why the Prophet ﷺ used to warn so much. Beware of the bid'ah, newly invented matters, innovations, especially innovations in the, in the Aqidah. He used to want so much because these people I'm talking about who are called the Qadariya. They're called the Qadariya because they deviated in Al-Qadr, the belief in Qadr. They appeared while some of the Sahaba were still alive. Ibn Umar was still alive, Ibn Abbas was still alive, and the rest of them were still alive. All of you know the Hadith of Jibril. You know the Hadith of Jibril, which is Hadith number two in, in Arba'in Nawawiyah, in the 40 Hadith of Nawawi. Umar says, Umar ibn Khattab, we were sitting with the Prophet ﷺ one day when a man came about, he had pure white clothes and his hair was pitch dark and nobody knew him and he was not a traveler and then he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, and he asked what is Islam, what is Iman to the end. That hadith is a story behind it. That is Friday's Halakha. I'm just giving you a preview. That hadith, it comes in Sahih Muslim. But there's a story behind it. A man came to Ibn Umar, I forgot his name, two of them actually. They came from Iraq to do Umrah or Hajj. And they said, when we go to Medina, we have to see Ibn Umar, one of the great scholars of Islam, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, who was a Sahab. When they met him, they say, Ya Abu Abdurrahman, there's some people who came about in Iraq. They read the Quran, listen, they read the Quran and they're very good speakers and they think they're seeking knowledge. But they say that Allah does not know what happens except when it happens. When Ibn Umar had that, he said, when you go back, tell them that I am free from them and they are free from me. We are on two distinct separate ways. And for surely I heard my father Umar ibn Khattab saying that one day we were sitting with the Prophet and then a man came with pure white clothes. Then he mentioned that hadith. 
So he used that hadith as proof there is qadr. So you'll, you'll be amazed. I know some of you think, who can, dis who can deny this? But there are people who deny that. And I have, met, I have met one, let alone those times. Most of these people have passed. This belief has become so extinct. Yeah. But there's people who still have this belief. They believe Allah does not know what is going to happen until when it happens. But we as Muslims who follow the correct way, the correct belief, we believe in Qadr. And part of belief in Qadr is believing that Allah has complete, perfect knowledge which encompasses everything. What has happened, what is happening, what is going to happen. In fact, he knows what is inside the souls. Okay? That is number one. Number two, Al-Kitaba, Allah's writing. What does that mean? It says, this means that Allah wrote everything about creation, their livelihood, provisions, age, deeds, etc. Meaning you, me, everyone here, Allah wrote when you're going to be born. Where you're going to be born. Scarborough General, North York General. Somewhere in Hyderabad, somewhere in Somalia, Hargis, wherever, it's written. What time you're going to be born? Allah knew before your mother knew. My mother knew when she was pregnant. Before she knew, He knew already that she's pregnant, and He knew already is she going to get a baby boy or a baby girl. And Allah has decreed already and wrote already. The deeds you're going to do, how long you're going to live, and the money, the provision you're going to get, all of that is written. And where you're going to end up, paradise or hell, all of that is written. He has known that before and wrote it down. He wrote what he says and what he does. And that comes to existence due to his actions and sayings. He also wrote what is entailed by his names and attributes. All these are written in the preserved tablet, which is called in Arabic, Al-Lawhu Al-Mahfuz. Lawha is a tablet, a piece of wood. That's called Lawha. But it doesn't necessarily mean whatever Allah wrote on was wood. No. I'm talking linguistically. That book which he wrote everything is called Lawhu Al-Mahfuz. The preserved tablet, English translation. What is the proof for this? Are we just making up stuff? No. We are Ahl Sunnah, everything we say it has to be proven, evidenced. He says the proof is in the Quran, chapter 27, which is Surah Al Naml, verse number 75 again. He says, وَمَا مِنْ غَائِبَةٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ and there's nothing hidden in the heaven or the earth, but it is all in a clear book. Is it clear? Who can give me a better evidence, a better quote from the Quran? That Allah wrote everything. You should know and you should know. You too. You should know. No. Alam ta'alam. What did he say? La. I just gave you. Alam ta'alam. Anna Allah ya'alamu ma fi samai وما في الأرض إن ذلك في كتاب إن ذلك على الله يسير الله says ألم تعلم أن الله يعلم ما في السماء والأرض وما في الأرض ألم تعلم أن الله يعلم ما في السماء والأرض don't you know that Allah knows what is in the heavens and the earth he knows that is number one number one was what knowledge he knows everything then he says, Inna fi kitab. 
all of that is in a book. Knowledge and then writing. Allah then finishes he finishes off that verse by saying, Inna dhalika ala Allahi yasir. That is easy on Allah to do that. It's easy on him. And you know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the first thing which Allah created was what? The pen, the qalam. And he said to it, uktub, write. He said, oh my Lord, what am I going to write? Allah said what? Write every single thing which is going to happen. So Allah had knowledge of everything and he wrote down everything. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً قَبْلَ, قبل السَّمَوَاتُ الْأَرْضِ and that was 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. 50,000 years before Allah created the earth and the heavens, He created the pen and told the pen, write, and it wrote everything. So Allah has known everything and He knows everything. And He has written everything down. And on a side note, you have to know, that knowledge is only for him. No one else can have that knowledge because that is the eternal knowledge of everything, perfect knowledge of every single thing which is going to happen. Nobody knows that knowledge. It's clear? Is it clear? Good. Number three. So we believe Allah knew everything and Allah wrote down everything. Number three, from the belief in Qadr, you have to believe in the Mashia. What is Mashia? It's called the will of Allah. Will, or you can say permission. The permission of Allah or the will of Allah. It is the belief that Allah willed everything that goes on in this universe. Meaning, nothing happens in this creation of His without His permission. Simple. Everything which goes on here, every single movement of every single creature, he has given permission for that to happen. No one can, all, can do something without his will. Meaning no one can do something which Allah does not want to happen. Do you understand? No one can do something which Allah says no, but he says yes and he does it. That only means what? That he is greater than God. Cannot work like that. He is the one who gives permission to everything to happen. Nothing happens without his permission. This is his world, his creation. Okay? He says it is the belief that Allah willed everything that goes on in this universe. His will and his preordaining power effectively covers everything. Whatever he wills will occur. Whatever he does not will will never take place. Example, Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا أَتَاكُمْ If Allah willed, he would, have, he would have made you into one nation, but that he may test you in what he has given you. If Allah willed, he would have made all of us Muslims. Right away, you're just born Muslim, you leave us a Muslim, die as a Muslim. But you're all brought here and he tests you. We have to take a small break and then come back, inshallah. Who's lost? If you're lost, raise up your hand. You're lost. No, no, no. Are you lost or not? No questions. You're not lost. Okay, good. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So this is the will of Allah. Nothing happens without His permission. Another clear proof, proof which is more clear than this. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ And you, human beings, you cannot will to do something and do it except when Allah wills it. The hadith of Ibn Abbas, the Prophet ﷺ taught Ibn Abbas, which is something all of us have to learn. We have to teach our children. 
احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله تجده تجاهك واعلم and he said to him oh ibn abbas oh young man let me teach you some very good words and he said to him waalam and we should know ان الامه if the whole population of the world how many are they 7 billion and change اجتمعت على ان يفعوك بشيء if all of them 7 billion gathered together to benefit you in something لم ينفعوك الا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك they'll never be able to benefit you in anything which except which Allah has written down for you and decreed وان الامة and the whole 7 billion and more of them if they are together together to harm you with anything they'll never be able to harm you except something which Allah has written down for you meaning nothing happens except which Allah has decreed if you had the question he asked was very beautiful and this is one of the benefits the implications of believing in the qadr it makes you courageous it makes you very strong nothing can happen to me except which my lord has decreed to me simple and what, what how can it be put in a better way if the whole ummah gather together with all their technology and science and their weapons and all they can never benefit you or harm you in anything except which allah wants because only what he wills actually happens you understand human beings can want to do anything to if allah does not want it to happen it will never happen all of us know that right or wrong now this is the belief of the khadr this is what you call the mashia of allah now he says because he is where the difficult comes in some many people they get um what can i say no doubts confused frustrated uh tangled i'd say tangled somewhere you know they believe in qada they have no problem but they just they need to remove those webs or something they say okay if everything happens by the will of allah so it means the people who drink and the people who steal that we hope also happens with the will of allah that's what it means right or wrong everything happens by the will of allah so all that corruption which is going on right now as we are talking it happens by the will of allah answer yes or no you agree all of you who says no don't worry we're learning you say no good another one only you it's good but it's wrong okay he says listen he says the will of allah al mashia is two types qawniya which means universal and shariya which is the legal and in the sharia or judicial al mashia al qawniya the universal decree or universal will it means that whatever Allah permitted to exist, that will exist. Whether it is kufr, unbelief, or obedience, or disobedience, whatever he willed will happen. And this is pertinent to his Mashiach, whether he loves it or not. This is also called irada kawniya. Therefore, Allah may decree as necessitated by his wisdom to pass things which he does not love and is not pleased with. Let me make it simple for you. Huh? No, I was just going to say that the body is the main and the mind is good. Really? You have a choice, Akhi? To do what's good or what's bad. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you? Okay, he's sure. That's good. People confuse the Mashiach, and this is where the second group of the Qadariyah deviated. The first group, they deviated in denying Allah's knowledge, and that is Kufr, actually. The scholars of before, they declared those ones, they are not even Muslims anymore, because they're just denying the clear Quran, that Allah knows everything. The second group of the Qadariyah, those who deviated in the matters of Qadr, are those people who said, no, Allah only wills the good. 
He does not will the bad. The human being creates the bad. The evil and corruption, disbelief, Allah does not will that. Allah does not permit that. That's what they believe. Now if you go back and you look at it with just fair, unbiased judgment, if you say Allah does not permit uh, this evil, disbelief, corruption does not happen by Allah's will, Mashiach, it means what actually? What are you trying to imply? There's something which is greater than Allah. There's someone who can do something in Allah's universe without Him permitting it. He does not have control, that's what it means. That is why the Prophet وسلم, he said, Al Qadariya Majus Hadil Ummah. The Qadariya are the Majus. You know who the Majus are? They call them the Magians or the Zoroastrians, the fire worshippers of this Ummah. The fire worshippers, those who used to live in Persia back then. Okay? The Persians used to worship fire. And they believe in two gods. The God of light and the God of darkness. The God of light is the one who creates good and happiness and everything which is good. The God of darkness is the one who creates evil and misbelief and all of that. The Prophet Sam said, these people who come from my ummah, who are Muslims, they are the majus of this ummah. Because when you say that there's someone else who permits the evil to happen, you're just saying there's another God for evil and another God for good. Is it clear? Okay, now let's move to the next point. Where did they get confused? Where did they get lost? Why do they have these problems? Listen to me very carefully. Where did they get it mixed up? Who knows? No. Make it simple, short, sweet, nice. Yes. You have it there actually. I just read it. There's a word there. Just look for it. No. I know you'll be wrong. Sorry. I have to save time. There's a word there. Love. Akhi, listen, talking about love now. They confuse this. Just because Allah permitted it, it does not mean Allah loves it. There's a big difference between the will of Allah and the love of Allah. They thought, oh, because Allah willed it, it means He loves it. So we cannot say that Allah loves disbelief and corruption and evil. So we say Allah does not will the evil to happen. It's someone else. That's why they got it wrong. But we say no, we don't believe it like that. We say everything happens by the permission of Allah. But it does not mean that everything is loved by Allah. He does not love everything which happens. But he does permit everything which happens. So that's why Allah says, this is Surah Zumar, ayah number 7. Give me that ayah from beginning. Allah says, listen carefully. Surah Al-Zumar, which is chapter 39, ayah number 7. It says, In takfuru fa inna Allah ghaniyun ankum. Wala yarda li ibadihi al kufr. That's the part we have there. Allah says, In takfuru, if you disbelieve, then you should know what? Fa inna Allah ghaniyun ankum. Allah is self sufficient from you. He does not need you. That's bad on yourself. Then he said though, وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ And he likes not disobedience for his slaves. He does not like it. He is not pleased with it. But does it happen or not? We have. Right now we have people who are disbelievers, right or wrong. So it is happening, but it does not mean that Allah loves it. وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ Then he mentioned, he goes on to say, وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ and if you actually are grateful to Allah, meaning you believe in Him and be good servants, He's pleased with that. 
Does that happen or not? Do we have Muslims right now who worship Allah, right or wrong? Yes, he says that, he's pleased with it. The other which is also happening, he is not pleased with that. So don't mix his Mashia will and his love. And that is where the question of choice comes. So someone may ask, what, so why does Allah let it happen? Why does he permit it to happen? It's because he gave you a choice. He gave you a choice. Allah created you and gave you senses and gave you a brain. You can know what is good and right. right. What is good, right, and what is wrong and bad. Then he put you in this world. And because he loves you so much and is so merciful to you, he brought you a messenger and his message. And he says to you, if you do this, I will love you and I'll take you to Jannah. If you do that, I don't like that. And he says, if you do this good, every good is multiplied by 10 up to 700 times more. This sin, every sin is just one. He brought you and gave you a choice. Let me ask you guys a question right here. Who amongst you is forced to be here right now? As we're speaking. Who feels there's some kind of pressure which is holding back here. Someone is forcing, someone is putting, I don't know, a sword or M16 or AK-47 on your head. Who's forcing you to be here? No one is forcing us. Right or wrong? You came from your house and you drove or you walked or you took the bus. You came to seek knowledge of your deen because you want Allah to be pleased with you. Right or wrong? And he permitted that action to happen. Right now, as we're speaking, there's people who are in the casinos gambling. There's someone stealing someone's money right now, right, right or wrong? Who forced him to do that? No one. Right or wrong? So Allah gave us the choice. And he said, he declared, what you choose will happen. You make your own choices. So you choose good, he makes that happen, he permits it, and he loves it. You choose bad, he permits it to, he permits it to happen, but he does not love it. It's that simple. Does it make sense? Clearly. Perfectly. Very good. So you have a choice. And when you make a choice, it depends now. There's two choices, good and bad. You make the good choice, Allah is, loves that. He permits it to happen and he loves it. You make the bad choice, you chose. So he lets it happen. But he does not love it. We take a small break, then come back and finish off, inshallah. Hold the questions. I know there's a lot. Heavy? No, it's not heavy. Just have a clear mind, Akhi. And I'll, I'll recommend something. Go back to the recording two, three times. It's simple. Once you understand it like this, that is enough for you. It is very simple. The question of choice. You know, some people, they say, oh, you tell him, come, why don't you pray? Why do you continue doing this? He says, oh, this is what is decreed for me. Right? This is what is decreed for me. This is my qadr. I was born sinner. You know? I was born evil. Who told you, though? Did someone open the lahul mahfuz, the preserved tablet for you, and you read? And you say, oh, Abdul Aziz, yes, he was born like that. Did you see that? Nobody saw. How do, you, how do you make a judgment? Why don't you come to the masjid and pray and be a good Muslim? Say, you know what? Born good. Why not? Why do we only use the qadr in the evil? Do you see that? Anyways, we have to finish because Isha is mo moving very close. How many of you have questions? Okay, not as loud as I thought. It's good. So everything which happens, it happens by the permission of Allah. Good and bad. But he only is pleased and he loves the good and is displeased and he does not like the bad. He says, it is obvious from this verse that Allah does not like kufr, yet it exists by his will in harmony with his wisdom. Everything which happens, happens by his wisdom. On the other hand, the judicial will is pertinent to Allah's um, legislation, Sharia. Hence, it is related to what Allah loves and likes, whether it takes place or not. 
It is also known as al-irada, al-irada sharia, the acts of obedience from the angels, prophets, and the believers. When they take place, they are loved by Allah, and they are passed by His universal will. When you do the good, it happens by the will of Allah, and He loves that, and He loves that. However, it is not necessarily that His commands are always executed. That is the reality. Allah commanded us to do so many things. But do we do everything he told us to do? No. That's just the point he's making. So number one, in our belief in Qadr, we believe that Allah has known everything. Number one is knowledge. Number two, Al-Kitab, Allah has written down everything. And number three, that everything happens by Allah's permission. And that includes, by the way, just to clarify, the actions of the people and every single thing which happens, whether it is a tornado or an earthquake, whatever happens, it happens by the permission of Allah and His decree. He knew it is going to happen, He wrote that it's going to happen, and He permits it to happen. Now, Allah has known this thing is going to happen, and He has written it down, and then He permits it to happen. Then there's the actual happening of that action. That is called the khalq, the creation of the action. We are created or we are the creators. We are created. So obviously all of our actions are also created. That's what it means. So my action of drinking water is created. Your action of going to the masjid is created. The other person's action of going to the bar and drinking alcohol is created. That's what we mean by the creation then. Now the actual action happening. So number four, Allah is the sole creator of everything, including man's deeds. No single atom or higher, static or in motion, but Allah has created it. The creator is only one, that is him. Everything else is created. Nothing that takes place in this world except that Allah has created it. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay'in wa huwa ala kulli shay'in wakil Allah says verily Allah is the creator of everything and he is the disposer of affairs over everything simple now that is the belief in qadr very simply easy as you see Again, some people use the excuse of the Qadr in their evil deeds only. He does bad, and if you talk to him and give him advice, why do you do this? He says, oh, this is what is decreed for me. Again, ask him that question. Did you see your book? Did you see the Lawhul Mahfud that this is decreed for you? How do you know? Number two, why don't you do good? And then you can use that same excuse. This is decreed for me. Why do you use the Qadr only in evil? Mankind has a choice, and all of us know that. All of us. You have a complete choice of choosing good or bad. Everyone makes his choices. And once you make your choice, Allah makes that happen. Because you made your choice. And then he's going to reward you according to your choice. And that is talking about human beings' actions. The actions. As for other things which you have no choice about, you have no, ac you have no control on, like a tornado or earthquake, or you have no control over that. You have no control over that. We are talking about here what? Your actions as a human being. You are responsible and accountable for every single thing you do. Everyone feels that. That is the belief in Qadr. So Qadr is in four stages or four themes. Number one, everything is written. Everything is written. And only Allah has that knowledge. Number two, everything is, sorry, number one, Allah has complete knowledge of everything. Number two, Allah has written down everything. Number three, everything happens by the permission of Allah. And number four, he is the only one who creates everything. What are your questions? Quickly, because we have five minutes. Now, what are the implications of Qadr? Like I mentioned before, it makes you brave. 
It makes you have real tawakkul, dependence on Allah, because you know nothing happens except what is decreed for me from my Lord. One thing you have to know, let me answer the questions you have. If you really want to feel comfortable in the Qadr, we as Muslims, we believe Allah is all just. He never oppresses. Allah mentioned that in so many verses of the Quran. <coughs> Allah does not oppress the people in anything. And your Lord was never oppressive to his servants. And in the hadith, Allah says through the Prophet Oh my slaves, I have decreed oppression to be haram on myself. Allah says, meaning he'll never oppress. And I've married and I've made oppression haram between yourselves. So don't oppress each other. That is a principle you should never forget. Once you have that, you'll always be comfortable. Allah does not oppress anyone. Anyone or anything, Allah never oppresses. So everything which happens to you is good. It's just that we as humans, our limited knowledge and wisdom cannot comprehend that. Sometimes we think something is bad, but it's actually, it's good for you. That's why Allah, he said in the Quran, Maybe you dislike something, but it is actually good for you. Or maybe you love something, but that is actually very bad for you. <coughs> Human beings, we are limited. Our knowledge is limited. But he, he knows everything. So when he tells you this is good, you have to believe this is good. When he tells you, I don't oppress anyone, then whatever comes from him has, has to be good. Okay, fire away, number one. I've answered your question now, I know. You still have it? I just mentioned that it's number one you have to be it's going to make you brave and courageous number two your tawakkul is going to be almost complete as Allah mentions about the Sahaba when the hypocrites used to say to them you should fear these people that are going to attack you you should fear these people that are going to kill you they'll say what say to them nothing will happen to us except which our Lord has decreed it gives you the real and the correct tawakkul. That you know nothing can touch me except what he wants. And he never oppresses me. So it has to be good. Just try, simply try to be a good Muslim. Do your part. See that is our, our, what we always say. Do your part and leave the rest for him. Just do your part and leave the rest for him. Tawakkul and Qadr, they are connected, just like Tawakkul is connected to Ikhlas, Tawakkul is connected to everything. Tawakkul is the secret to Tawheed. If you really know your Lord, you believe in Him, and you believe that He decreed everything, and everything He decreed is good, then you just have to depend on Him. It has to fall in like that. Otherwise, it shows that your belief in the Qadr is not shaky, but you have to straighten out some things. It's clear? If you really believe in it, you're still a Muslim, inshallah. I'm not saying that you're not a Muslim or anything. Believing is good. We have to believe. There can be belief. How many of us today... Yeah. 
because our iman varies. Some of us are strong in that, some of us are weak in that. But it does not have to be that if you believe, then you have to be perfect. Otherwise, it means you don't have real belief. No, it's not like that. How many Muslims believe you have to pray five times a day? And that is the key to Jannah. And that is the key to Allah's love. All of us believe that. But how many Muslims pray five times a day practically? It does not mean that. See, that's my point. It does not mean they don't believe. It's not. It just means they are weak. See, there's knowledge and there's practice. The practical part of it is the difficult part for most people. No, it's the it's weakness. It's true. Sorry? What is the hadith for you? I know exactly his point. He's just trying to say those Muslims who don't practice, even though they know that belief completely. It's not weakness, it's actually foolishness, meaning they know something but they don't act on it. You know, but that part, me and him, we, we disagree, that part. And we've had this discussion before because I believe some of them are just weak. You know, they're just weak. And if you give the example of 50 cars coming at 200 miles an hour in the highway, life is sweet. Everyone is going to jump off that road. But in regards to our akhirah, we take everything lightly. You can call it foolishness. You know, I call it weakness. I think we're talking about the same thing. No, no, that's exact. We've had this discussion before many times. You have another question? Quickly, last question. Yes. Come again? Can I give reference in the Quran that Allah gave mankind a choice? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَدَيْنَاهُمُ النَّجْدَيْنِ and we show them the two ways. We show them the two ways. And Allah also says, Inna, inna hadaynahum sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. And he showed them the path. Either those who are going to be grateful, believe, or those who are going to disbelieve. And it doesn't have to come in the Quran. I just ask you right now, who forced you to come here? Is someone forcing you to stay here right now? Why didn't you choose to go somewhere? Why didn't you choose to go and watch? I don't know. This Maple Leafs game today? Maybe. Why didn't you go there? Because you have a choice. You have a choice. Even if it's not in the Quran. It's there already. But some things, it's just natural in yourself. Every human being knows that. Do you have ability to make a choice or not? Yourself? Okay, very good. That's the proof. <laughs> That's the proof. And every human being feels like that. Unless you're in extreme situations where you don't have a choice. Then you're excused. Then you are excused. You're somewhere where there's no food and you're going to die and there's only dead carcasses you're rotting. You don't have a choice. You understand that? And we're talking about things which are not really concerned with the Qadr as we are talking about. The actions, good or bad. Should I come to pray or should I stay in my house and watch a movie? It's simple. You have a choice. Right or wrong? True. 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 Next question. It's true. And then uh, about the thing about the Hajj, I was like, there's a hadith where the Prophet is reminding us that the shares of the believers are all good for you. Right? So you believe in that Hajj, and it's good for you. Why? Because when some good happens upon you, it's you're good. Patient. It's patient is good for you. Yes. And then when some bad happens, bad, 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 when good happens, you're thankful. Yes. And then when bad happens, you're patient. This, this is like the result 
That's why you said Allah does not oppress you. So even when the bad happens, he is patient and that is good for him. The actual action was what? Bad. But he was patient. By his patience, that actual, act have actual action turned out to be is good. I know you have so many questions. It's past Salah time. We'll answer all of them tomorrow, inshallah.